So modules allow you to add your own custom C++ nodes to Godot. And the way you do them is by creating a folder with whatever name you like instead of this modules folder that exists at the root of the Godot source code. So in my case here I have Brahma. And then what you have to do is add this sc sub file, this config file, and this register types uh, header and register types C++ files. And all you have to do is put this code here. And what this is going to do is going to add the source files that you specify here to the Godot build system. And this start operator is going to make it so that it adds all the C++ files from the current uh, level of the folder you have. And then Godot is going to automatically find the header files based on the C++ files that he adds to the build system here. And if you want to add other C++ files that are on subfolders from this uh, root folder that you added here, in my case is Brahma, you can specify the relative path like this. So here I have graph, which means that it's going to add the other C++ files that I have here as well to the module. Then on this config, you have to put these two different functions here and return true but I'm not going to talk about them. And if you want to learn more about this, you can read the documentation here on this link. And then you have to add this register times file and you need to add these two functions. The name in the middle here between the underscores there should be the same name as the folder for your module. And then on the C++ file, you're going to define the function. So the level here is what level your module is going to need. So how many, because there's different build systems you can do with Godot that doesn't include other parts. So I think the core is the uh, most root one, let's say, then the servers, then the scene, then the editor. So if you need all functionality from the editor, for example, you would specify uh, editor here, module initialization level editor. But for most cases, you're probably going to use scene only. So that's what I'm doing here. And then you're going to use this macro here and you're going to put the name of the class you create uh, inside of the macro. So I'm going to show the standard camera 3D. And the other functions are just copy the code that I have here and just replace uh, with your own name on the folder. And also, uh, in order to include the headers on this file so that you can put the classes, you're going to assume that the root of the path that you put here is from the folder that you created inside of the modules. So here, the standard camera 3D is on this uh, folder here. So I'm putting this path. So it's basically just a C++ file. And then you, you're going to inherit from whatever you want to add functionality to Godot uh, with. So in this case, I'm adding functionality, functionality to the camera 3D. So I'm, this class inherits from camera 3D. And all you have to do is just put this GD class macro here and put your class and the class that it inherits, to, uh, inherits from here. And what this is going to do is going to subscribe your class to uh, Godot's uh, class system, which is a class called class DB that manages all the times for Godot. And this is going to allow uh, you to expose your class on the editor and also for your game. And then you can put whatever functionality you want here. And the other important functions are these bind methods. This allows you to put, to subscribe functions uh, from your class to the engine as well. And the way you do it is just by using this function here from the class DB, and then you use this macro. Then here you'll pass the name of the function you want to subscribe. And here you'll pass an address to the function pointer from your class. And if, you're, if the function has any arguments, all you have to do is just put the arguments of the function here, the name of the arguments, and then it's going to understand. And if you want to add properties or the member variables uh, from your class to the editor as well, so you can change from the editor. All you have to do is call the add property macro. Then you can search uh, here on the codes to see examples on how they do it. This allows you to subscribe the member variables of your class to the editor, so you can change them from the editor. And that's basically all you have to do. So if you do this steps here, then what this is going to allow you to do is to find the class you created there on the editor here. And then this basically allows you to add any functionality you want to the um, nodes, for example, from C++. So that's basically the point of um, modules. So now I'm going to explain a little bit on why this works. 
So basically, there's three main, three main functions on Godot that run for any operating system it's running on. The first one is set, main setup, which is the function that is going to set everything up on the engine. Then main start, which starts the engine. And then main iteration, which is performs all the steps of the, uh, the game loop, basically. So at some points along this uh, main setup function, is going to call this initialize modules function. And that's the function that is essentially going to call all the functions from the folders you have inside of the modules folder. And this file here is generated at build time uh, with Godot's uh, build system. And the way that you, this works is that on the root of the Godot's folder, they have this sconstruct file. And they use a framework called scons, scons that is going to build a command, C++ command to compile all the C++ files based on whatever Python code you put inside of this file here. And they have this other file, which they create custom functions that help them uh, build the build files at uh, build time. So this, whenever you see this .gen, .cpp, is files, are files generated on build time. And here they're basically generating the code from the file, which is based on the name of the folder you put there, uh, which is this name here. And this creates the codes that you're going to see here. And that's why the function name that you put there on the module has to be the same as the folder name you put inside of the modules. So this file generated on build time is generated based on this mod methods.write modules that they put on the main as construct file that they have on the root of the folder, uh, which runs this function here, which generates the code. And also they have this sc sub and the modules bu module bu modules builders file inside of the modules folder as well that are also from the build time that help uh, write the files as well. So this file specifically writes the macros that define uh, whether or not the module is active. So it's going to generate another file that is going to define the macros here that checks uh, here to see if the module is active or not based on what, whatever build type, build type was run. And this is basically the main entry point. So after this function run is, runs, it's going to call this function here. It's going to call this function, basically, which is going to call the macros you put here, which are going to initialize the class, classes you put inside of the folder which allow you to uh, build your own uh, functionality from C++ to add whatever you want to the engine. 